You guys. You guys have been in my comments section and my DMs chasing me like, girl, where is that Accutane update? And now, after almost a year of treatment, I am finally, officially finished with my Accutane. If you have not yet watched part one of this series, I really suggest that you go watch that video first. Uh, it covers how Accutane works, why I went on Accutane, important context about my skin, weekly check-ins. And then in part two, we covered my skincare routine, uh, some of my favorite uh, sunscreens to use while on Accutane, some more weekly check-ins. And now you're watching part three, the final video where we discuss whether Accutane works for me, all of the side effects I experienced throughout treatment. And also at the end, I want to do a little bit of an FAQ, uh, answer some of those frequently asked questions that I noticed that kept reoccurring in the comment section. So quick reminder, I was on a dose of 20 meg of oral isotretinoin daily over the course of about a year. It was just shy of a year. That was my course. And this is considered to be a low dose Accutane treatment. The idea here is that a lower dose over a longer time period addresses the acne while minimizing the side effects. Pretty please, pretty please, do not go to your healthcare professional and be like, Karima from the University of YouTube, this girl from down under said that uh, 20 meg every day over a year would be the way to go. Don't do that. Um, your treatment plan might look different to mine because you might be a different sex, a different weight, a different height. Your dermatologist might have a different approach. YouTube is good for sharing experiences, but it is no substitute for medical advice. Please talk to your doctor. <laughs> I had every intention of continuing the weekly check-ins that I did in part one and part two, but truthfully, 2021, life just sort of hit me in the face. <laughs> Uh, there was just a lot going on in my life at that time, but don't worry, I've got lots of progress shots and I will fill you in. In hindsight, I'm actually a little bit glad that the weekly check-ins didn't pan out because I think every week just would have been like, guys, look at my lips. Honestly, I had a pretty serious lip saga and we're going to talk about it. I've got photos, don't worry. I'm not gonna make you wait. Let us tackle the big question. Did Accutane clear my skin? Did it work? Drum roll. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent for sure it worked. I'm gonna pop some uh, comparison photos on the screen from before I started treatment to now after finishing treatment. So I would say now that my skin is pretty much perfect. I mean, no skin is perfect, but it was as perfect as it's ever going to be. And I haven't had a blemish in months. My skin uh, went from being quite red and reactive and oily and acne prone to now uh, being a little bit more of a normal to dry skin type, very calm. Uh, I don't get any blemishes, not even around that time of the month. I am 100% clear and I'm just so relieved about that. Like I just don't think about my skin anymore. You know, there was almost like a part of my brain that used to be dedicated to worrying about my skin. And now that part is free to think about more productive things. To me, this was like a very successful treatment plan. And if for some reason I had to do it all over again, I would. So let us imagine a timeline. I would say that I experienced the most rapid improvement in the first seven weeks of treatment. I know that a lot of people who take Accutane find that their skin gets worse before it gets better. This is a phenomenon known as purging. Uh, I didn't actually experience any purging. My skin appeared to respond immediately. At that seven week mark, I was, um, I was still getting an occasional sore blemish on the lower portion of my face and my neck, but the vast majority of the congestion on my face had cleared. From weeks 11 to weeks 19, my face was completely clear, but I was still getting these really kind of sore blind blemishes on my neck. Week 19, if we recall that planet that I grew on my neck, that cystic blemish, that would actually turn out to be the last blemish that I experienced. So from weeks 19 onwards, my skin just slowly improved. It was like that last 20% of progress after weeks 19. I wasn't getting any additional blemishes. My acne scarring was slowly fading. My skin just looked really happy, <laughs> just really happy. And I really expected going into this experience that I would get really dry and really flaky. I didn't experience that. I had some gentle flaking around the mouth sometimes, but like negligible. 
And I think actually that was because I was on a low dose treatment plan. Had I been on a higher dose, I think I would have experienced more of those side effects. That is not to say that I didn't experience side effects because I most certainly did. Most of the side effects that I experienced, I would describe as annoying, right? Mildly irritating. Also, all of the side effects came on very gradually. Uh, so it wasn't like anything caught me off guard or one morning I woke up and had a severe side effect. It all came on very gradually so that I could see it emerging and be like, oh yeah, like I see what's, what's going on here. Um, I wasn't panicky at all throughout. I have the official list of Accutane side effects as listed in the pamphlet, and I wanted to go through this again together. I did this also in part one, if you want to compare. So the first one is dryness of the lips, mouth, nose, and skin. Uh, so yes, my facial skin was a little bit dry and flaky, but nothing serious. I did notice that the inside of my nose would get quite dry and crusty. I just get a bit of Q-tip, a bit of lip balm, go up there, that solved the issue entirely. My body skin didn't change much. Um, I didn't get excessively dry on my body. The only exception is I was a little bit oilier on my chest and my back and I had a little bit of congestion there prior and Accutane seemed to have solved that and now my skin is just normal. So if you were wondering whether uh, Accutane can treat acne on the body, yes it can. Next, we've got fragile skin, so somewhat fragile. I noticed that my skin would scratch quite easily, and so I avoided doing all the things that might disrupt my skin, like waxing or chemical exfoliants, laser. You shouldn't do any of that because your skin is quite fragile. Change in the color of skin. No, I don't think so. Peeling of the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. So I noticed a little bit of peeling on the bottom of my feet when I was running a lot. Um, and I did actually find that blisters on my feet and cuts on my hand were so slow to heal, super slow. I've still got some, some little scars on my hands from, from like little paper cuts. It was like so ridiculous. Itchy skin rash. Uh, so I am prone to dermatitis and I did experience some perioral dermatitis while on this treatment. And I'm gonna talk about that more when I talk about my lip saga, cause they're connected. An increased susceptibility to sunburn. Yes, I got burnt recently. I never get burnt. I haven't been burnt in years. I was so cranky with myself. Um, definitely you need to use a sunscreen every day. Flaring of acne, usually at the start of treatment. So I imagine this is describing purging. Uh, I didn't experience purging. And I have a funny feeling, this is my theory. I have a funny feeling that it's because I was on topical Retin-A prior to going on Accutane. And maybe that sort of, emerged all of that dwelling congestion, I didn't experience purging. Sweating. No, I don't think I noticed a difference there. Changes to the nails. Look, my nails have always been crap, but they became especially crap towards the end of my treatment. Like I had two or three nails where they just split in the nail bed and I just had to like watch them grow out. It didn't hurt at all. It just looked ugly. <laughs> Eye problems such as dry, sore, swollen or itchy eyes, discharge or trouble seeing at night. Uh, yeah, I actually think that I might have experienced all of those. It started off as mildly dry eyes in the morning. I would wake up in the morning and my lids would be like stuck to my eyeballs. <laughs> Great visual. Um, and then I noticed that sometimes my vision would get a bit blurry and then I noticed that I became sensitive to light. So when I was driving, I had to wear sunglasses. It became quite torturous to film videos in front of um, the studio lights. And then also towards the end of my treatment, I noticed that my eyes were just generally irritated, right? So I would take photos uh, for this and I would notice that my eyes were always bloodshot and red. It was one of those side effects that tended to dip in and out. So sometimes I noticed it more often, other times I didn't notice it at all. Yeah, so I already actually feel as though this side effect is wearing off now after a few weeks um, of finishing treatment. Sexual dysfunction, including impaired sexual function in males, decreased libido and gynecomastia. Nope, didn't notice any of that. Nosebleeds. No, but my nose constantly dripped. 
after like, I think that was the four or five month mark, my nose was just always running. Uh, I noticed it in particular when I was working out, I'd be at PT and I'd be like, <laughs> like I was just spluttering always. It was so gross. I also noticed it, um, it would ramp up when I put on a face mask. Face mask, a 2021 essential, like you can't avoid it. Tenderness or stiffness in your bones, joints or muscles. No, didn't notice any of that. Tiredness. How do people measure this? Like everyone's tired. That's just the nature of the beast, isn't it? Headache? No. And for a number of years, I was um, a chronic migraine sufferer. And so when I initially read this in the pamphlet, I got nervous. Um, but I am happy to report that I experienced no additional migraines that I can tell of. Hair loss. So I don't think that I experienced hair loss from the Accutane treatment, but my hair has been behaving so strangely this entire time. Like it's so frizzy and dry and it misbehaves all the time and then it wouldn't hold a curl. Uh, yeah, it was definitely like a bad hair day that repeated every day. But my understanding is that this resolves after treatment. Um, so I'm just gonna continue with my weekly, bi-weekly hair masks and just hope for the best. But yeah, the hair was annoying, although, one good thing about the hair is I only have to wash my hair like once a week now. There was a point where I was um, quite a bit oilier where I felt like I almost had to wash my hair every day. Um, but hair washing is a thing of the past. <laughs> um, to be honest, the only reason I wash it is because I get like sweaty from like working out. My hair doesn't get oily anymore. Although like a lot of the other side effects, I imagine that this will regulate once the Accutane is out of my system. I'll keep you posted, but that was actually a fun, fun side effect. I enjoyed that one. Excessive hairiness. I do think, I actually do think that I became a little bit hairier. Let me tell you how I came to this conclusion. So I have an at-home IPL machine by Braun. Love it. Uh, totally recommend it. Shouldn't use it while on Accutane though. I had achieved some pretty considerable hair reduction in my armpits. I didn't have to shave that often anymore. And then on Accutane, I started noticing that I had to shave my armpits every day. I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then I noticed I had to pluck my eyebrows every day. I've never had to pluck my eyebrows as much as I have in the last year. And then also because the Accutane makes your hair brittle and weak, when I would go to pluck the brow hair, it'd break. Are you guys familiar with the show, um, The Good Place? If you've not watched that, you should. It's a fabulous show. If we were designing a bad place, especially for me, especially for Karima, it would feature this, where you go to pluck a brow and it breaks every time. It's diabolical, I love it. Hoarseness, nah, don't think I experienced that. Uh, one that I want to put in, mental health issues. So the link between Accutane and mental health issues is hotly debated. Uh, as I mentioned, earlier life just hit me in the face in 2021 there was like legitimate concrete things in my life that were making me sad and anxious i don't think that the accutane contributed to that um, if anything not having to think about my skin was a massive massive relief for my mental health um, but if you if this is a concern for you and you have a history of mental health issues then i would be keeping very close communication um, with your healthcare professional a big thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare. If you're not familiar, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes from cool creatives who are generous enough to share their craft with us. Maybe you wanna draw realistic humans or photograph a cheese board. Skillshare has a class about it. My most recent Skillshare discovery is by Danny Shapiro called Writing for Inner Calm, a mindset, methods, and daily exercises for all. So Danny is a novelist. She's a best-selling novelist. And this class is about writing, but I think that there are some valuable lessons here for any creatives. So she talks about the importance of rituals. I'm big on rituals. I'm a big believer. Uh, also how to overcome uh, creative paralysis, some exercises to be more present in your life. If you consider yourself to be a writer or even just somebody who occasionally writes, this is a must watch. So if you're also looking to flex your creative muscles, then click the first link in my description box. The first thousand people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can try before you buy. Thanks again, Skillshare. Back to my lip saga story time. <laughs>
All right, let us now address, let's address the lip saga. Oh my God. Do I want to put these photos on the internet? Like I'm totally cool tracking my acne on the internet for everyone to see, but there is something about tracking a raging lip infection that just is not that cute to me. <laughs> At week 16, I first documented that I was experiencing a little bit of a flaky red perioral dermatitis around my mouth, okay? My lips went from peeling lightly in, in very uh, fine sheets to peeling in big chunks of skin that were, was leaving my lips like bloody and like split. It was really intense. And then I noticed that the area underneath my lip here on the vermilion border had become really crusty and it was weeping and it just didn't appear to be healing. I mean, I can laugh about it now, but at the time I was like, man, this must be the Accutane lips that everyone is talking about. Like it's insane. <laughs> Um, and I think I also have a little bit of the tendency to dismiss things like this is fine. Like the house is on fire and my lips are bleeding, but this is totally fine. So I walk into my dermatologist's office and the first thing she says to me is, oh my God, are you okay? And I just had this moment like cute existential crisis. I was like, am I okay? But really like, am I okay? She was like, your lips. I was like, oh yes, absolutely. My lips, please help me. Um, so she took some swab tests and uh, confirmed, yes, it's an infection. I did two separate rounds of antibiotics in an attempt to treat this infection and I just couldn't get on top of it. I actually, truthfully, I finished my treatment like two weeks early because I couldn't get on top of this lip infection and I really didn't want to go on another round of antibiotics. If you're a woman, you know, antibiotics mess with your system. Um, so I, I picked the lesser of the two evils, although I did notice that once I uh, ceased taking the pills, the lips cleared up real fast. They resolved. Happy ending. Okay, so what did we learn <laughs> from Karima's lip saga? If you are on Accutane and you have dry lips and your lips are peeling lightly, then that might be normal. If you are on Accutane and your lips are peeling in big hunks that are leaving your lips bloody, unable to heal, if you're experiencing a rash around your mouth, if you have any sores around your mouth, these are all signs that you should definitely, definitely talk to your dermatologist because that might be something that needs treatment. Had I got treatment earlier, maybe it wouldn't have turned out to be such a big deal at the end. Although I'm sure some of you can like recognize yourself in my story. I think women especially have the tendency to under report symptoms. This is fine. <laughs> my lips are bleeding, but this is totally fine. Um, but it's really important that we advocate. We all advocate for ourselves. I think that was an important lesson for me to learn again. <laughs> Now I want to address some of your frequently asked questions. So many people asked um, again about my dose and the length of my treatment. I was on 20 meg a day uh, every day for just shy of a year. Your treatment might look different to my treatment because we are likely different sized humans. Do you have to be on the contraceptive pill? So I think this might depend on your country, your dermatologist. I was told that you have to be on two forms of birth control. Accutane is a Heritogen, heritogen, it can cause birth defects. Um, so it's very important that you don't get pregnant while on this drug. What was your skincare routine during Accutane? Uh, so I detailed my skincare routine in part two, which I will link on the screen. My skin actually didn't get super dry, as I mentioned. Uh, so for me, it was all about just really gentle, nourishing, hydrating skincare. No AHAs, no BHAs, no scrubs, no retinol, no actives, really just really gentle, gentle, nourishing skincare. Everything like super gentle and simple. What lip balm is best for Accutane? Well, 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 do I have a treat for you? I reviewed 40 lip balms in a video. I'm gonna link it on the screen. You can go watch that. It depends what you like. It depends what you like, baby doll. Does Accutane address scarring? So because the skin, uh, turns over so rapidly on Accutane, I did notice that any red or purpled or dark discoloration uh, tended to fade a little bit quicker. If your uh, scarring is uh, older scarring or it's textured scarring, so it's like pock marks, I'm not sure how Accutane would really address that. I don't know how much improvement that you're gonna see there, but there are so many like topical uh, options and lasers that you can discuss with your dermatologist once you finish 
um, once you finish your treatment course. Will the acne stay away after you finish the course? So that's the goal. <laughs> oh, that's the goal. For many people, Accutane does cure their acne forever. For others, there is a chance of relapse. And there are uh, like uh, risk factors for relapse, right? So one of them is if you have an underlying health condition like PCOS. I read one article that said men are also twice as likely to relapse as women. Uh, also, if uh, your treatment plan wasn't long enough, or perhaps if the patient was often taking the Accutane on an empty stomach, that means it's not as bioavailable, right? Accutane is fat soluble, so you should take it on a a full stomach, preferably with a fat source so that it can really absorb um, into your system. Uh, I'm going to pop some studies in the description box if you want to read up a little bit more about that. Will Accutane change my skin type? So Accutane does shrink the sebaceous glands. So it would be fair to think that you will be less oily um, than before your treatment. Um, to what degree your skin type will change is totally dependent on your body you know, your treatment plan, your dose, how your body responds to the Accutane, stuff like that. But I think it's safe to assume that you will be less oily. One more thing that I wanted to mention before we bounce is that a lot of, I noticed in a lot of the comments and a lot of the DMs that people often describe feeling really like afraid and fearful. Accutane is a really serious drug. We should be cautious. We should be well informed. Um, but for me, when I was kind of fearful about going on Accutane, the antidote for me was knowledge. Before I started Accutane, I made a real effort to seek out the journal articles and the scientific articles and really try to read them, even though there's a lot of jargon and they were really boring. And honestly, some of them, the studies didn't seem so robust, but I wanted to learn as much as I could about this drug because I need to know what I'm putting in my body, right? <laughs> that knowledge I think also helped to protect me a little bit from all of the alarmist pseudoscience that you're gonna encounter about Accutane. Um, probably from very well-meaning people. But when people came to me with actual nonsense about Accutane, I had some frame of reference, like I could kind of determine, was that reflected in the science or is this some old wives tale that continues to, continues to surface? I am going to do my best to put a bunch of links in the description box to scientific articles so that you can read them and hopefully that will make your life a bit easier. I hope this video answered all of your questions, but if I've missed anything, then let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be down there answering all of your questions. A big, big thank you to everyone who shared their acne and Accutane uh, journeys in the comment section of the previous videos. You 100% helped me with my journey. I found it to be such a comfort and I'm sure that you've helped so many others who are reading that comment section. It's Thank you so much for your contribution. I hope that you are having the best day. Come say hello to me on Instagram at Kareem and McKimmy and I'll chat to you very soon. Bye.